Oh, my name is One, two, three, four, Larry. five. Okay, so we got it. Okay, ready? So you're gonna start and then I'm gonna take it and I guess I'll just talk afterwards. Okay, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this, the 2002 Lamborghini, as the Americans say, Murcielago, or the Italians, Murcielago, but however you pronounce it, this thing is amazing, six-speed V12, but it does need a detail, and it's going up for sale on carsandbids.com. Now, at the very end of the episode, once she's all cleaned up, we're gonna go for a ride with two very special guests. Good to see you. Cars oh, and bids. Like that. that have just a little bit of a difference in opinion. Oh yeah. You gotta stay tuned for that. That and a whole lot more in this episode of Drive Protect. The Lamborghini Murcielago was manufactured from 2001 through 2010. What's up? I don't feel I'm fat. As the successor to the ever popular Lamborghini Diablo, which was manufactured from 1990 all the way through 2001, both with the iconic V12, which you're gonna hear at full scream in just a bit. This Mercy is a 2002, which was the first year they were available in North America and the first model under new management from the parent company, Audi. So there was a lot at stake for their partnership's initial variant. This one came with a 6.2 liter V12 with 572 horse, an increase over the Diablo's 5.7 liter V12 with 70 less horsepower. This was a substantial increase in power and refined looks. In 2002, only 442 of these were built, and this being a six-speed makes it incredibly desirable, but it definitely needs a ton of love to get ready for sale on cars and bids, just like the Ford GT we did that was left outside for a few years. Luckily, we cleaned it up and found a new home through Doug. So let's do it, I'm pumped. Now, if you haven't seen the video, you gotta check it out. It's absolutely insane transformation. This one doesn't have any rodents like that one did, but it's definitely in need of a facelift for sure. With the car inside and under the lights, the paint is swirled everywhere and has random isolated scratches that need to be addressed later. The license plate rattled and scuffed the bumper cutout. The interior is really dirty and dried out. The exhaust tips are coated in some black grime that we need to address later. And the wheels haven't been cleaned in quite some time, so we do have a lot of work to do. Step one is to break the lug nuts free, put her up on the lift and pop the wheels off to take a peek inside before giving her a soak with ammo boost and ammo foam on both the undercarriage and the paint. Now, earlier that day, I received my new SuperVac by MetroVac. I got this one so I don't have to drag the smaller unit around the studio. I wanna fix it to the wall with a super long hose and I want the same drying power as the Master Blaster, but with vacuum capabilities as well. It also comes with every possible attachment you could need. This thing is a beast. Next, I measured where I wanted it and then secured the screws into the wall through the holder. The metal mounting bracket holds the axle of the blower, so you can take it off the wall easily if needed. Next, I secured the blower hose on the bottom with the stainless steel hose clamp, while the vacuum hose is at the very top when you need it. Once everything was set up, I then used the blower and a microfiber towel to dry the many scoops and vents on the Lambo. 
Now keep in mind, this is a very powerful blower and I suggest wearing ear protection, especially if you're working on cars daily. As I mentioned before, Metrovac is right down the road from me and it's a family business. So check out their website for all things vacuums and air blowers. Use discount code AMMO for 10% off to support a small detailing focused business. All right, now at this point in the process, the outside, the suspension underneath have been clean and dried. Now normally during the wash process, I feel with my hand and I'll be like, you know what? It needs to be clayed once I'm done with the wash, even though it's still wet, we wanna use that lubrication. We're gonna take a, uh, some soap, squeeze it out, and then clay it using the soap as lubrication. That's what I normally do. I didn't do that on this one, here's why. I just didn't feel, I didn't feel like it needed it. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Once I dried it, I went in and went, ooh, wait a second, there's some, is there some clay on here. So what I'm gonna do is do one panel at a time. There's probably about three or four panels that have that issue. The reason I'm filming right now is I just did this section here. This one I didn't do. With my eyes, you can see that there is a massive difference, but there's also a downside. I don't know if I'm catching it, so what I'm gonna do is have you hear through the microphone. This, just a regular towel, I've already clayed this. Listen. Now I'm gonna do the area that hasn't been clayed. Clearly a big difference. Now, what's the upside, the downside? This is great because now it's in the clay. All the junk that was here is in the clay. I don't have to deal with it when I'm polishing. The second thing that's kind of interesting is this paint is very soft. The reason I can tell that is when I clayed here, I had tons of lubrication, I still scratched the paint. So I'm gonna pull the camera in, hopefully you can see the difference. There is a depth difference, meaning there's, there's particles all over the place here that are making it so you can't see anything, right? It just doesn't shine the way that it should. I took them off so it's much better here. On the flip side, in the process of me doing that, I've scratched the paint. So there is ups and downs with claying. So typically what I say is if you're gonna clay the paint, usually I like to do that right before I polish. I try not to do that standalone. Or if I do that and there's like a little section, oh, you know, this part was under a tree or something, I'll clay it, then I'll do a quick polish and you're good to go. So just know that this is an abrasive and it can scratch the paint, especially if it's super soft like this one. With a few spots of contamination now removed, I polished with a straight cut wool pad and exfoliate polish, then repeated the steps with a straight cut foam waffle pad as the last step. Since the car is in the air, I got a much better look into the front brake duct scoops and they desperately needed to be cleaned up, so I removed both grills. I sprayed frothy in the brake duct scoops and removed everything with a blue towel. As it turns out, the license plate area had a bunch of glue residue left over. For that, I used Rapid Remover. I let it sit for a little while, then I gently rubbed with my fingernail to loosen the adhesion before polishing. Later on, while I was polishing the bottom of the rear bumper, I noticed the exhaust pipe coating had failed and was not black nor was it chrome, so I thought it was just best to remove everything and start from scratch. This was not easy. Attempt one was with Barkeeper's Friend and 4 ot Steel Wool. No luck. Attempt two was with Compound and 4 ot Steel Wool. Better, but we still had way too much work to do. Attempt three was with Sandpaper by hand. Now we had some improvement here, but not great. Attempt four was with an acid-based chrome cleaner and then steel wool. Again, it worked, but I'd be here for like two days if we kept going in this direction. For attempt five, I brought out the big guns. I used the LHR 75, which is a three-inch machine with 800 grit to quickly grind away the old burned up coating. Once the coating was removed, I polished the pipe with a wool pad and compound and then finished up with polished. When I was done, they looked way better and now they match the wheels perfectly.
With the smaller machines out for the exhaust tips, I hopped over and polished the calipers and the engine carbon fiber parts just to kind of keep the good times rolling. Plus, I also did the door jams with the scissor doors because they're very exposed and visible, so I wanted to make them match the rest of the paint as well. Next, I worked on the interior after polishing because I likely created some dust from the machine on the interior while I was working on the door jam. So it makes sense to work this area last to avoid working over yourself and potentially killing any profitability. Speaking of that, a lot of you have asked about the ATA 300 Pro Series I've been working on for the past 18 months with over 90 never seen before videos, interviews, tutorials, downloads, quizzes, and behind the scenes footage geared for professional detailers who wanna build, maintain and grow profitable detailing businesses. Again, I'll put a link in the description to get on the email list to find out where and when all these videos will be released. I'm super excited about this. The first step inside was to remove the Velcroed in floor mats and scrub every leather surface with lather and an interior brush. Now, if you look closely, you can see pretty much everything has this shiny sort of surface on it and it's greasy maybe, I'm not exactly sure. It's, it indicates that there's body oil and dirt on the surface and it just needs to be gently removed. For the interior emblems and vent trim, I finger polish with a microfiber towel and exfoliate polish to remove the cloudy, hazy finish. Oh yeah, look at that. It's the little things. See how shiny that is now? That was all messed up before. All right, so I'm behind the camera now. This is the Lamborghini door, as you can see. It goes up that direction and down this way. This is the driver's side sort of elbow area. Now the trick with older uh, interiors like this is you see this spot right here, not this black spot, forget about that, but this spot right here. That's where uh, whoever owned it, that's where their elbow sat. So it's a constant rubbing. Now as a detailer, you're gonna go, oh, look at that brown spot, that brownish discoloration. I'm gonna go in there, clean it and scrub it. What's gonna happen is the stain, this brown spot is gonna be about this size. And then when you start cleaning it, it's gonna be a little bigger, a little bigger and bigger and bigger and so on. You're gonna be chasing it. And what's happening is you're removing the dye. So when I come into a, you know, a car like this, I go, okay, older car, you know, very you know, fancy Lamborghini. It's untreated or uncoated. Right? It's on the older side, 20 plus years. If I were to be aggressive on this, you are gonna damage it and basically ruin the rest of the, your detail. They're gonna come in there and go, oh man, we have to re-dye this. So what I'm gonna do is spray lather on top of this, lightly wipe it with a microfiber towel, and then when the customer comes in, I'm gonna to explain to them, hey, you need to have this re-dyed because if I clean this any more aggressive, just barely, even with water sometimes, you're just gonna remove the dye and now you're, uh, you know, you're upper creek without a paddle. So keep that in mind as a professional detailer. That's when you sort of get into these little dilemma situations where you're gonna be left holding the bag. So be careful here. With the mats now drying, I again use the blower to flush out any and all dust and trapped garbage from behind and underneath the seats before I started vacuuming. It can be super helpful on tight interiors to do this first before vacuuming because you're gonna flush everything out and you're really gonna get that carpet super clean when you do this. As a last step on the interior, I applied a coating of mousse leather conditioner and UV protectant because it desperately needed it. And then about after two minutes or so, buff it off to a matte finish and it looked fantastic. Next, I cleaned the wheels and then coated them with Gelite Pro.
I also coated the freshly polished calipers for a fresh pop when looking at them behind the wheels. I did the same thing on the exhaust tips as well, so it was really starting to come together. Prior to the paint coating, I made sure to remove any last oils or greases with a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. Once the paint is now prepped, I prime the applicator pad with Reflex Pro 2 and only work one small panel at a time, especially in summer because of the humidity, before wiping it off or as soon as it rainbows. You have to do it immediately. Now, during the application process, if you feel that it's becoming too sticky or super difficult to remove, then you're likely waiting too long or working too big of an area at one time. Work in smaller areas and complete the rest of the car, including the door jams. With the paint coating now curing, I added mud to the wheel wells for some needed pop on the older plastic liners. Over at the sink, I sprayed the honeycomb grill with frothy hoseless wash and then scrubbed with an interior brush to clean all the crevices. Ironically, as I'm watching this back on my computer now, I just realized that we introduced frothy over five years ago on the Audi R8 in my old garage. You can use it on the paint, the wheels, the door jams, the trim, engines, motorcycles, bicycles, glass, and pretty much anything, including honeycomb grill. So I hit it with compressed air afterwards and then just reinstalled and the car was really coming along. It looked fantastic. With the wheels now back on the car and torqued, I started working on the glass, and then I heard a knock on the door. I think my mommy's here. Hey! Hey, you! Come on in. <laughs> hey, don't. Good to see you. Yeah. Check out what I bought. You bought this? No, I'm kidding. I didn't buy it. <laughs> I didn't buy it. It's a Lamborghini Murcielago. Absolutely amazing car. Wow, wow. 580 horsepower, 2002. They, this is when they first came to the United States. Crazy fast, crazy loud. And it's got scissor doors. Let me show you on the side. Scissor doors? Scissor doors. Much different than, let's say, this one here. You open it up. Kind of normal-ish without mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it goes to the side, right? This one, Whoa. scissors. Wow. Another reason why they call it scissors is if you put your hand in here and it drops. <laughs> like gone. a scissor. Wow. But this thing is crazy, crazy fast and stupid loud. Really? You want to find out? Sure, let's go. Let's go for a ride. Go on the other side. Ooh. Put your butt in first, mother, like such, and then spin. Oh, jeez. There you go. Say hi, Mom. <laughs> what do you think? It's loud. It is definitely loud. <laughs> definitely loud. Seems like it could be fun. I don't know if it's for me. Not, not for you. Not for me. You can't put uh, groceries in. Uh, no groceries. <laughs> no car seats. No car seats. None of that. It's a fun car. Everybody stares at you. Piece of pie. You buying lunch? I'm going. Let's do it. Let's do it. Looks like Doug's here. <laughs> That's called making an entrance right there, buddy. <laughs> nice to see you. Good to see you again. Wow. Ta-da. This is a beautiful car. Well, this thing came out absolutely perfect. That was cool. It looks great. So you've spent some time with this. You've had this oh, for a while. Oh yeah, we've had this for a little while. We cleaned up everything. There was definitely uh, 
somebody in here who was quite sweaty. I know that sounds weird, but it was totally shiny in, on the inside, not just like armor all, but like you can tell this guy was gripping and ripping the wheel here. Interesting, yeah, okay, so, well it's a fast car. Yeah. yeah, so we got this cleaned up, the wings look great. Everything looks great, it's especially difficult on a black car. Especially this, the rear here, this was all blacked out. We polished all that and as soon as you start it, it literally shoots on the wall. This, this is going to be one of the loudest cars you've ever Okay. Yeah. So. Prepare myself for that. Yeah. I uh, noticed gated six-speed manual, the dream Murcielago configuration. Yep. These have already started to rise a lot in value because it's sort of like the old, the last of the old school landing gear. They didn't make a lot of them. They're kind of insane. Yeah. There's only 4,000 Murcielagos compared to almost 12,000 Aventadors. So this car is like on a totally different level of like rare wow. and special and unique and I'm excited to drive it. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Close it off. <laughs> How many times I've done that? Yeah, I know, it's weird. Woohoo! No glove box either, as if, as if the airbag surprised them. But we gotta put in an airbag? What? Oh no, well we can't do a glove box then. Drive through it. 